In this topic, we're going to discuss blood in defense. So this is for extended IGCSE. By the end of this topic, you should be able to answer the questions, what cells help us with defense? What are white blood cells? And what are the different types of white blood cells? So we're going to look at phagocytes and how they're involved in phagocytosis, lymphocytes and how they secrete antibodies. We're also going to look at blood clotting and the different steps in blood clotting. So here you can see white blood cells, red blood cells, and platelets. You can easily identify the red blood cells because of their distinct biconcave shape, and also because they're red due to having hemoglobin. Now the white blood cells are also easy to identify because they've got large nuclei, which have stained purple in this diagram. The platelets are small fragments of cells, and they don't have nuclei. So it's the white blood cells and the platelets which are important in helping us with defense against disease. White blood cells help us to defend against disease. Now there are far fewer of them compared to red blood cells. They also look different. White blood cells are not disc shaped. They do not have hemoglobin. But they do have nuclei. Now, like red blood cells, the white blood cells are made in the bone marrow, but their function is to protect the body from any pathogens. So a pathogen is a bacteria or fungi that has entered the body. Here's an actual blood smear. Notice the white blood cells. So those are the ones that have got that large purple nucleus. Look at how much bigger they are compared to the red blood cells. So you've got two different types of white blood cells that you need to know at IGCSE. You've got phagocytes and lymphocytes. You need to call them by their different names, not simply white blood cells. So the key words to remember for each are that phagocytes are involved in phagocytosis and lymphocytes release antibodies. Looking at phagocytes first, these ingest pathogens, for example, bacteria. So let's have a look at phagocytosis. Notice how the phagocyte has got tiny vacuoles, which I've colored in yellow in this diagram, and these are filled with enzymes. So the first step in phagocytosis is that the pathogen comes into contact with the bacteria. It then extends its cytoplasmic arms, which we call pseudopodia, around the pathogen. The pathogen then becomes part of what we call a food vacuole inside the phagocyte. So if you have a look in the next picture, you'll notice how the enzymes, those tiny little yellow vacuoles filled with enzymes, start to move towards the food vacuole. And then they help to digest the pathogen. So in the last step, you can see that the pathogen is being digested. So the different steps that you need to remember are the phagocytes surround the pathogens. They ingest these pathogens by using pseudopodia. They take the pathogen into a food vacuole and they digest the pathogen using enzymes that kill the pathogen. Okay, let's have a look at lymphocytes now. So these release antibodies. So lymphocytes are also white blood cells, and they don't engulf the bacterium. Instead, they release antibodies, which are proteins. So think of it like you're playing a computer game, and you shoot your enemy instead of trapping him. So imagine that you are a lymphocyte, and you're shooting out antibodies. So if a pathogen, for example, a bacterium, enters the body, it's going to meet a large number of lymphocytes. One of these may recognize the pathogen as being something that its antibody can destroy. So this lymphocyte starts to divide rapidly by a process called mitosis. So it makes a clone of lymphocytes just like itself. These lymphocytes then secrete antibodies. And the antibodies are proteins with many different shapes. <clears throat> They are quite specific to the pathogen that they attack. The antibodies attack the bacteria, or the pathogen, and make them stick together. 
they can also dissolve the membranes of the bacterium. Furthermore, they can also neutralize the toxins that some pathogens produce. So something to remember is that there is a different type of antibody for each pathogen. Now this process takes time, so it may take a while for the right lymphocyte to recognize the pathogen and then a few days for it to be, produce a big enough clone to make enough antibody to kill the pathogen. So in the meantime, the pathogen breeds and this makes you ill. So eventually, however, the lymphocytes get the upper hand and you get better. Lymphocytes are a very important part of your immune system. So the way in which they respond to the pathogens by producing antibodies is called the immune response. So after you've had a disease, for example measles, lymphocytes are ready to produce more of the appropriate antibodies if the same pathogen was to enter your body again. So this makes you immune to that particular disease. If you have a look at these two pictures, you can see that when you first come in contact with a pathogen, your body has to make the lymphocytes, so this takes time. That's why you get the symptoms. But when you come into contact with the same pathogen again, your body already has lymphocytes that can fight off the pathogen before you feel the symptoms. So we call that a secondary immune response. So the details of what you need to know about lymphocytes are they recognize the bacteria as foreign, they divide to form many identical cells, they release antibodies and these antibodies attack the bacteria and make them stick together. The antibodies can also dissolve the membranes of the bacteria or they can neutralize the toxins that some pathogens, for example, bacteria release. Remember that there's a different type of antibody for each pathogen, so the antibodies are quite specific. Okay, let's have a look at blood clotting. Now, when you cut yourself, you bleed. Before long, platelets help the blood to thicken and the bleeding stops. The thickened blood has formed a clot. Now, without clotting, blood would be lost and the pathogens would enter. So this is another way that the blood defends against disease. Platelets, as you remember I said, are small fragments of cells and they don't have nuclei. They are made in the bone marrow just like blood cells. Now normally blood vessel walls are smooth. When a blood vessel is cut, the platelets bump into the rough edges of the cut and react by releasing a chemical. The damaged tissue around the blood vessel also releases chemicals. In the blood plasma, there's a soluble protein called fibrinogen. The chemicals released by the platelets and damaged tissue set off a chain of reactions which cause the fibrinogen to change into fibrin, which is insoluble. The fibrin forms fibers and these form a mesh across the wound. So red blood cells and platelets get trapped in the tangle of fibrin fibers. And this is how a blood clot is formed. So here you can see when a blood vessel um, is broken, the blood starts to leak out. However, you can see that platelets convert a soluble protein called fibrinogen into fibrin. This creates a thread or a <clears throat> mesh over the wound and red blood cells and platelets get caught in the net and make a blood clot which seals the cut. So the new clot dries to form a new scab and then you have new skin if you've cut yourself on your skin growing underneath the scab. So the actual details that you need to know are platelets stimulate clotting and they release thrombin which is that enzyme that converts fibrinogen into fibrin which is insoluble. This fibrin forms a mesh to trap red blood cells 
and you also have phagocytes engulfing pathogens or bacteria at that site of infection. The cells divide by mitosis and identical new cells are made so that you have new skin being made underneath the scab. Okay, in summary, we've looked at the cells that help us with defense. So you've got the white blood cells, the lymphocytes, and the phagocytes, and also platelets. The different types of white blood cells that we've looked at are phagocytes, and remember they're involved in phagocytosis. And that word to remember is pseudopodia. Lymphocytes secrete antibodies. And blood clotting, remember that platelets secrete thrombin, which is the enzyme that converts fibrinogen, a soluble protein, into an insoluble protein called fibrin. And that concludes our lesson, the end.